Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy that, that I have uh, to give a brief uh, presentation of myself so I can switch uh, uh, in parallel the system here. Um, my name is Michael Lopsch, as you said before, thank you. And um, I'm a studied political science, Eastern European history and philosophy in Germany, in Bonn, and then worked for over 10 years as a foreign policy advisor in the German parliament. Um, after the, the uh, parliament uh, decided to move to, to Berlin, I decided uh, to leave the parliament and uh, become uh, um, a political analyst and, and expert uh, on foreign policy. And I did a lot of work in the region of Central Asia for over uh, 15 years. Uh, then I went uh, from Germany to, to Austria, to Vienna. And there I started uh, as director of campaigning for a European citizen initiative, Stop Extremism, which wants to bring um, the struggle, the European struggle against extremism, not only from any religious part, but also politically, to the EU agenda in uh, Brussels. And we collected over 1.8 million signatures. So the European Union is now forced to deal with our, uh, let's say, um, draft of a resolu uh, resolution which should challenge the extremism in Europe. Um, as well, I am also writing uh, peri periodically for uh, some media in Europe uh, regarding extremism, um, integration, and the struggle of uh, new Islamism and political Islam in Europe. And I'm also um, editor-in-chief of the uh, newspaper or magazine Shalom in uh, Vienna, which uh, is a magazine by the uh, Austrian-Israeli uh, partnership uh, uh, organization. So you might think that uh, giving, giving a, a statement to such a big audience after the pandemic, uh, it might be, I might be a little bit rusty, but I hope that uh, everything uh, will work out very well. Um, I try to, to make it uh, quite briefly, so I hope uh, that we can also have a good discussion afterwards. The Muslim Brotherhood in Europe, we always hear that the Muslim Brotherhood is quite active uh, in the region uh, of uh, MENA, but are they also active here? Yes, they are. They, they are, I would, I would say it, possibly for our societies, they are a more immense threat than probably any single individual terrorist. Because beside the lives uh, 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 that are threatened uh, by terrorists, the work and the aims of the Muslim Brotherhood are really a threat to our European societies. And we have to deal with that. And we have to be aware of it. Not only we as, let's say, the Westerners itself, but also the uh, uh, Muslim communities here in Europe. It, it is very important because we are one society, not only Christian, Jews, atheists, but also the Muslims. They are also a part of our European society. And this is why it is so important. There are several reasons uh, uh, why the Muslim Brotherhood uh, is, a, is a threat and why the Muslim Brotherhood became such a powerful movement here in Europe. It is because we, our Western societies, have to ask them ourselves, did our integration process since the 50s, the 60s work out or did it fail? What did we do wrong? 
The other thing is, why do still European governments and politicians cooperate closely with movements like the Muslim Brotherhood in Europe? Give them huge financial support, give them a public position uh, and that they can become uh, a powerful source within the Muslim community in Europe, but also as a political advocate in Western governments, parliaments, etc., PP. So we have to be aware of it. And I uh, would like to give you um, a brief, a brief description of the of the ideological background of the Muslim Brotherhood and then how the Muslim Brotherhood is working worldwide, but mainly here in Europe. The finances, which is a very essential part of uh, the discussion, because an extremist with money is definitely more dangerous than an extremist without money. And we have to be um, aware of that. So let's start with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in general and uh, its ideological background. So the Muslim Brotherhood says itself that it is a movement which is based on Islam, but not only an Islam focusing on religion, focusing on individual belief, but as a political force in everyday life regarding politics, regarding law, regarding society. So it is combining religious and state ideology to fill the gap after the time of the colonialism, because the Muslim Brotherhood mainly was founded to fight colonialism, uh, colonialism. It was financed mainly by the British government in the, at the end of the 19th century to fight uh, against the Ottoman Empire and to gain more influence in the MENA region. So we have to take this in mind that the Muslim Brotherhood is not in, only an invention by Muslim people, but it was also invented by a Western government. So Islam is not a religion. Islam is not a belief for the individual, but Islam is a political force itself. And with their ideology, they want to unite all the Arab and Islamic world with only one ruling word, which is not a law or several laws which are defined and executed by the society, but the word of the prophet is the only thing that is important and which is valid. Therefore, in consequence, they are fighting Western influence and Western values because those values and those influences are against the word of the prophet. Therefore, in consequence also, they are fighting tolerance and they are fighting pluralism. They are fighting uh, equality of the genders. They are uh, fighting diversity in the society itself. Promoting the importance of unified ideology, there is only one kind of Islam, as I said before. But the interesting thing is, in opposition to Salafists, Daesh, etc., they are open and seem to be very tolerant to locally and regionally manifested organizational forms. The MB, especially in Egypt and uh, in the MENA region itself, acted mainly as a humanitarian organization. Through this work as a, human, a humanitarian uh, aid agency, they gained 
influence into the societies of the region. We can see this especially in Egypt, which uh, is uh, one main part of uh, the strategy of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, especially in the Arab world. Then in consequence, the Brotherhood rapidly grew in the region without, and this is very important, without naming itself Muslim Brotherhood. There are Muslim Brotherhood organizations name themselves MB uh, uh, in some uh, Arab states, but for example here in Europe, you won't find any single organization with the words Muslim Brotherhood in its name. You won't find it. You won't find any Muslim Brotherhood here in Europe. One main thing is that through its uh, concept and through its strategy, the Muslim Brotherhood wants to marginalize any other Muslim movements because they might become a threat of their ideology and they might become a threat of their strategy getting more and more influence uh, in the Muslim communities. The Sharia is, was and is the only guidehood, the only guideline for a statehood for the Muslim Brotherhood. Nothing else. No laws, no international uh, uh, agreements uh, can be accepted by them, only the Sharia. Therefore, non-religious political and also social statehood is in their eyes simply blasphemy. Also, religious, political and social statehood cooperating with the West is also named blasphemy. So the Muslim world can only survive by uniting all Islamic countries under one single state, the Caliphate. This, you might think, uh, uh, is the same what uh, Daesh is saying or Al-Qaeda. Yes, you are right. Most of the ideologists of Daesh and Al-Qaeda were taught ideologically and also in their propaganda by the Muslim Brotherhood. And then they became terrorists to fulfill their ideology. So this is something where you find a melting pot of uh, the same strategy, the same concept uh, for the caliphate. They also, what one of the founders of uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood said again and again, we have to reconquer Europe. We tried it through the Os uh, Ottoman Empire in the 15th, 16th, 17th century, but this is not over yet. We have to reconquer Europe. And of course, the Muslim Brotherhood also states to reconquer Palestine, destroy Israel, and all Jews. So let's, let's have a look how the, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, is working, is uh, collecting money, is uh, uh, increasing uh, its influence. The first thing, not only in the Arab world, but uh, mainly also here in Europe, what the MB is doing they want to adopt in societies. They don't want to show themselves as some medieval, bearded, uh, non-modern individuals. No, when a member of the Muslim Brotherhood would sit here, he would have a suit, he would have a tie, he wouldn't have a beard, you wouldn't recognize him. So 
point, important point is to adapt in society so that they see you as a Westerner, as a tolerant person. They are also positive on globalization because globalization for their economic success is essential. They use the religion to collect money from their members, from the Muslim communities worldwide, which is huge, we come back to this later. And they're covering, hiding their finances. There are a lot of offshore accounts by members of the Muslim Brotherhood in the Cayman Islands, British Virgin Islands, etc. So they are hiding their money trail. Who's the ideological leader at the moment? I don't want to talk about uh, Albana and Kud, uh, which are the, the, the founders of, of the ideology, but the still living Yusuf al Qaradawi is the intellectual head behind the Muslim Brotherhood. He was taught by uh, Hassan al-Banna, the inventor of the Muslim Brotherhood, or the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood. He was being jailed several times because of his preachings and agitation against President Nasser in Egypt. He had to leave the country and relocated in Qatar in the early 1960s, where he resides until today. He has developed, and this is the reason why we are frequently talking uh, of Qatar as one main sponsor of the Muslim Brotherhood. He has developed close ties to Qatar's leaders and can presumably be regarded as the religious chief advisor of the ruling family in Qatar. So he made a significant career he established various religious educational institutions and founded the Qatar University uh, Faculty of Sharia Law. His most famous impact, not intellectually, but for the whole community of Muslims in the region, was his weekly TV talk show called Sharia and Life, broadcast, uh, broadcasted by Al, uh, Al Jazeera since 96 followed by approximately 60 million views throughout the Muslim world. We are always, we as uh, Westerners, we always think that Al Jazeera is, is a quite uh, liberal uh, TV broadcaster, uh, spreading also some critical uh, words uh, into the world. But when you listen to the original Arab version of Al, Jariz, Al Jazeera, um, your termination might change a little bit. Al Qaradawi was also the main scholar behind Islam Online, a popular Cairo based Islamic website featuring resources and fatwas. And he is president of the Europe based European Council of, for Fatwa and Research in the UK. This is one main institution which defines Sharia's worldwide to the Muslim community globally. So there is an institution, a legal institution in the UK teaching undemocratic Sharia's into the world and it can act openly. This is, uh, there is no, no sound on. Uh, this is a brief video what Al Qaradawi is saying about the Jews. You see that a man who does not have only influence 
in the Arab world, but influence on Muslims worldwide is preaching anti-Semitism, is saying that Hitler did a great job. So this is one partial explanation why some Muslims are also anti-Semitic. And we have to fight this all, all together. So what about the Muslim Brotherhood in Europe? How does the organization look like and which characteristics does it have? As I said before, there is no official MB organization in Europe by its name. When you talk to somebody, when you think there might be a connection to the Muslim Brotherhood, they openly deny it. I don't have anything to do with the Muslim Brotherhood. The members present themselves as Westerners, well integrated, and they are also using current narratives popular in the West to gain support for their hidden agenda. One example is the word Islamophobia. Every critical voice trying to challenge the MB ideology here in Western Europe will be called an Islamophobe individual. There is an Islamophobia report which is published annually by a Turkish AKP-controlled institution called CETA, which lists all Islamophobe people in the world. And these are not only, uh, let's say, right-wing Nazis, also Islamophobe are imams who are criticizing the Muslim Brotherhood. And the funny thing is, not the funny thing, the sad thing is, this Islamophobia report was financed, co-financed by the European Commission for several years now. Uh, I was part of, of a team which tried to advocate to stop this financing in Brussels and successfully uh, the Commission and the Union stopped its financial uh, support for this two years ago. But for more than six years, the European Union was also responsible for this Muslim Brotherhood Islamophobia report. They also look for support and public recognition by Western political, pol cultural, and VIP stakeholders. They don't want to be seen with, uh, let's say, conservative or radical imams to show their cause uh, to, the, to, re to the religion. No. They want to show to their people, to the Muslim communities, that they are the only representatives for Muslims in the world and in Europe, and therefore they have close ties with those politicians. Let me give you a brief example. In, the, uh, in some uh, MB publications, there was a photo by the German Interior Minister Seehofer together with the main representative of the MB here in Germany. And under the line there was said, that the MB de, met the interior minister, met the German government to sign a contract of cooperation betwe between the German government and the Muslim Brotherhood. In fact, this photo was taken by the recent Islam conference here in Berlin, where Seehofer welcomed probably 500 representatives of the Islamic community there yeah, also this guy from the Muslim Brotherhood. There was no contract, there was nothing. The German government even criticized the position of the Muslim Brotherhood. But this is how, how, they, how they try to work in their community, but also outside their community, but also inside other Muslim communities to show we are the only representatives of Islam and you have to support us. So what might be 
some signals how to see if a person is supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. So you have definitely, and we tried this several times and were quite successful, you have to look into the history of the organization this person is representing. There you might find some links. You have to check the founders and the activists of this organization. You might get a hint. You have to read carefully the texts and the references they use. If this is uh, only a conservative interpre interpretation of political, social life, religion, or are these texts going back to uh, some Muslim Brotherhood ideologists? The financial ties are also very important. Where's the money coming from? Is the money coming from offshore accounts? This might be also a hint. And also the connections transnationally. This also can be a good proof to see where they come from. So in general, winning legitimacy, voice and influence within the Muslim communities in Europe and within Western civil majority as official representation of Muslim life in Europe. This is their main concept in getting support from the Muslims, but also from politicians, government, and society. We are the only official representation. The influence is a long time approach since the 50s. They start with establishing national branches. They copying the organizational structure by migrants who were already members in their homelands. And for example, here in Germany, Germany was the first country in the 50s which was let's say, where the Muslim community was infiltrated by the Muslim Brotherhood. People came from the Arab world to Germany. They already had contact and were members of the Muslim Brotherhood. And they started to grow with the same concept, with the same strategy they learned and were taught at home. And the main thing in the Muslim Brotherhood let's say community, is the so-called family. Family in Arabic, Usar, is the main tool to spread the message of the MB. So to, to grow and to define this Usar, you have always four to five men who are already members, proven members of the Muslim Brotherhood. They recruit others in their local environment also to join them. And through a long process, through tests, exams, they have to prove to the family founders that they are ideologically in the right position to become a member of the family. They use tests. And when this grew on the local level, then you reach the Baya, which is then the, let's say, the unit of this family, which then can grow from the local level to the regional level to the national level to the transnational level. As I said, it is connecting then to other families in the region and is growing and growing. And this strategy started already in the 50s here in Germany, for example. The first German nationwide MB organization was founded in 58 and continued to grow until the 80s, 90s. How's the situation today? 
There is the Federation of Islamic Organizations in Europe, which is the, the cover organization of all MB activities in Europe. And you see when you look into the names, which are difficult to read, there is no Muslim Brotherhood here. You don't see it. For example, in, in Germany, it's the Deutsche Muslimische Gemeinschaft, DMG, which claims to be the only non-Turkish Islamic representation here in Germany. They are members of the Islam Conference, well heard by, also by the media, because some don't know that this, in fact, is a Muslim Brotherhood organization, the main Muslim Brotherhood organization in, Europe, in Germany, or they ignore it. These are the current numbers, of course, estimated. In Germany, we have probably about 44,000 members. In the UK, 37,000. In Italy, 25. In Spain, 10,000. What is more interesting is the estimation about the national income of the Muslim Brotherhood organization. Only in Germany, there are 446 million euros annually. In the UK, 251. In Italy, 110. And in Spain, 44 million euros. To understand more properly what the strategy which opposes terror acts, etc., et is, I translated, uh, um, or we translated, a strategy paper by the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, which was uh, written in the 80s. Um, it was a strategy paper for Muslim Brotherhood members here in Europe, how to act according to the philosophy of the Muslim Brotherhood. To accept the principle of temporary cooperation between Islamic movements and nationalist movements in the broad sphere and on common ground, such as the struggle against colonialism, preaching, and the Jewish state, without, however, having to form alliances. This will require, on the other hand, limited contacts between certain leaders on a case-by-case -case basis, as long as these contacts do not violate the Sharia law. Nevertheless, one must not give them allegiance or take them into confidence, bearing in mind that the Islamic movement must be the origin of the initiatives and orientations taking. To use diverse and ver varied surveillance systems in several places to gather information and adopt a single effective warning system serving the worldwide Islamic movement. In fact, surveillance, policy decisions, and effective communications complement each other. To study the centers of power, both local and worldwide, and the possibilities of placing them under influence. So they are hiding their true ag agenda. They want to change the Western system by going through the Western institutions, not fighting against them. The weapon called Islamophobia, as I said before, increasing influence in state-controlled agencies like the Islam Conference here in Germany, being partner, the only partner of Western authorities, and banning all critical voices. What about the economic basis of the Muslim Brotherhood? Because, as we found out before, extremists with money are more dangerous than extremists without money. So the banking, the, the economic basis of, of the Muslim Brotherhood, one point is the banking system under Islamic law. There are very, very big banks 
controlling and managing the MB money worldwide. Just to mention the Al Taqwa Bank, Akeda International Bank, and Al Hiyas Investment. A trading system under Islamic law, which is mainly concentrating on halal certifications. When you go to a Turkish or Arabic supermarket here in, in Europe and you see everywhere the halal certificate, you don't think about this is a business model because this halal certificate is not a genuine certificate by, a, let's say, a political institution, the EU, for example, which is dealing normally with those certificates. No, you see several certificates. There is not one certificate. And with most of those certificates, the Muslim Brotherhood is gaining a lot, a lot of money. Also with meat, acts, and import. The third line is the humanitarian aid under Islamic law, which is mainly done by the international organization Islamic Relief. You probably maybe heard about Islamic re uh, Relief already. This is, this is an organization controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood. They have billions of euros. As I mentioned, the halal market, um, there are some stati statistics what the market is about and about what sums we are talking. When you see 2017, it was 1.4 billion US dollar in the halal certificate market. We estimate that in 2000. Uh, 23, it's already 2.6 billion US dollar. This is the market value of the halal market. So it's a huge, a huge business. And of course, the Muslim Brotherhood is financing a lot of religious institutions in Europe. Um, I'm happy, this is difficult to read for you, um, to give you this uh, uh, chart you so you can check. Um, only in France there are about 44 million euros spent for cultures and religious centers in the last years by the Muslim Brotherhood. Finally, what challenges do we have? As I said before, we have to ask ourselves, what did we do wrong? We have to ask the Muslim communities regarding integration, parallel societies, what can be done. I would say that there are enough laws which can challenge Muslim Brotherhood activities here in Europe. We don't need new laws, especially we don't need any stricter criminal actions. I would, give, would like to give you one example uh, in Austria. Uh, in Austria, we have a, a conservative uh, Green uh, Party coalition, and the conservatives are, became quite a populistic uh, movement. So what they did, they want to steal uh, the narrative against uh, 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 Islamism from the right-wing FPÖ. So they started campaigning against the Muslim Brotherhood by uh, doing raids against members, uh, going to their homes with uh, squad forces, uh, harassing their families, etc. This was a horrible situation, not only for, for families and small kids, which were they, they opened their eyes and saw machine guns uh, by, by the squad forces of the police. But with such actions, uh, as a result, you do the opposite. Because I spoke then with many Muslims, which were quite criti uh, critical to the Muslim Brotherhood, 
And they said, well, we cannot tolerate what the, the West is doing with those members. Uh, now we support them. In my view, what we have to do is to cut the financial sources of the Muslim Brotherhood. Don't allow them uh, to collect money, to, 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 to have a financial system through offshore uh, organizations. Um, what we also have to do, we can, as, as a Western society, we can, of course, criticize those actions, but in fact, the Muslim communities are also <laughs> responsible for tackling it. We have to, and this is the only thing, what we also can do is to support liberal Islamic communities, to support critical thinkers, and not supporting any more Muslim Brotherhood activities here in Europe. Because, as I said in the beginning, the Muslim Brotherhood is probably for our societies uh, a threat which is not compared with Salafists or terrorists. So this is all from my side. Thank you very much. You are absolutely right. Um, it's not only a threat uh, to, to European societies, it's already a threat uh, to the Central Asian uh, region. Talking about Uzbekistan, talking about Tajikistan. I mean, Hizbut here is already very, very active in the region. Hizbut here is probably one of the more radical uh, uh, groups. Maybe you can compare them more to Daesh. Uh, but what I see when I travel to Central Asia is uh, that especially the, the, the Turkish, Miligurush, and Diyanet influence is increasing ideologically. And uh, in fact, Miligurush and uh, Diyanet is more or less a part of, of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, ideology. So I see that there is a, a, a definitely a threat. Also, when we look into the uh, ethnical uh, tensions in the region, Uzbeks, Kyrgyz, etc., etc. So this can become a real problem, not only regarding Afghanistan, uh, which, which is already uh, a challenge uh, for your countries. So I totally uh, agree with you. And also, the Central Asian countries have to challenge uh, this problem. Yeah together with the Europeans, of course. Again, you, you are absolutely right. When, when I was talking about this, uh, this example with the photograph, I just wanted to give you an example how the Muslim Brotherhood's propaganda is using pictures, is using photographs for their own cause. Uh, but of course, as I, as I also said, Western institutions finance the Muslim Brotherhood. There are different reasons why they do it. Some say, well, the Muslim Brotherhood is not Daesh. And only through cooperation and interaction, we can, we can bring them on our side. And that's the reason why we are also supporting them. Uh, they, they compare it mostly with the so-called uh, Ostpolitik in the 70s and, and 80s. This, this idea says the, West, the, the Eastern Bloc only fell, communism only fell because we engaged with those societies. We, and, and this engagement was mainly responsible for the civil change in 89. And this same idea they transport to their, let's say, dialogue with uh, Islamic institutions, which I would say is wrong, but this is, this is one idea behind it. There are also others who just don't know, who really don't ignore it that 
They are talking and then they are supporting a Muslim Brotherhood organization. And the third, which especially in the European Union is the case, is this new identity discussion, to, to, to be frankly. The European Union says, when, when I'm talking with representatives of the, uh, of the European Parliament and also the Commission, they always say, yes, we, we support them, but we have to show that we are diverse. We, can on, we cannot only support uh, uh, liberal Muslim communities. This would discriminate those conservative uh, 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 Muslim communities. This is why we are supporting. We don't have a problem with that. Tell me that the Muslim Brotherhood uh, did a bombing attack. It did not. So we are working with them. We are diverse. So this, this is, it's, it's, it's a huge problem, and we have to, we have to challenge this, and we, in every second point, we have to point out to our governments, to our institution, who is behind the Muslim Brotherhood. But at the same time, I have to admit, it has to come also from the Muslim communities. They have to stand up, they have to say no. We don't want it anymore. We don't want this propaganda and ideology anymore. I would use the term realpolitik. Mm. The problem is, how long did it take for Europe to say that Hezbollah is a terror group or Hamas is a terror group? Mm. <laughs> this never will happen with the Muslim Brotherhood because you cannot say they are, terror, they are, they are terrorists. They are fighting against our values. And that's the only point where Europe can be active. Someone and any organization which is challenging and questioning our Western values should not be financed by any uh, official state institution, point. Today you will give a presentation about how serious and critical the Muslim Brotherhood expansion in Europe. But do, what do you think that the decision makers in Europe with our political parties, parliament, what are the actions or measurement or at least protective steps they can take before this such expansion, especially that Muslim Brotherhood, they are representing themselves and they are representing the entire Islam. So what do you think the procedures they have to take? The first thing is we have the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. And this could be a basis for all national go governments in the EU, but for also for the EU itself to say any organization which is violating at least one point of the Fundamental Rights Charter cannot receive any more public funding or any more public cooperation with official institutions. This could be a first and a very effective step because when the Muslim communities throughout Europe see that organizations close to the Muslim Brotherhood are not anymore cooperating with official institutions, I'm quite sure that they will lose a lot of numbers in their membership. Second thing is any organization which violates the Fundamental Rights Charter of the European Union is not allowed or you have to control any foreign funding for this organization. This is a second step because you can say that extremists with money are more dangerous than extremists without money. So you have to cut the financial sources from foreign countries to those organizations. I think these are two steps, first two, two steps, the European institutions, the European Union can take. But on the second hand, we also have to make sure that the Muslim community itself is the main player in such a fight against the Muslim Brotherhood. Because without their support and without their doing, we can do anything, but it will destroy our society, which exists of Westerners, but also of people from Muslim countries. So it is a work 
a quite effective work for the Western governments, for the Western civil societies, but also for the communities from the Muslim countries itself. You said you can't combat them from inside within. Muslim within the community, they can, they have to combat also. What do you think that the European government or decision makers, in a way or another, they have to do with the community, Muslim community, that they are, let us say, against the, the action and violations of Muslim Brotherhood? What are the decision makers have to do for those Muslims? How to support them, for example, to combat the Muslim Brotherhood? How? Look, there are, any time, there are official talks, official conferences, official dialogue structures between governments and the Muslim communities. As for now, I would say that, for example, the German government is mainly talking to Muslim organizations controlled by Erdogan through uh, DTIP, controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood, or even controlled by uh, uh, by institutions which are conducted uh, by Tehran. I think one main thing is also to give a signal to liberal Muslim communities that they are welcome to be officially recognized as a dialogue partner for uh, the, let's say, the inner religious and the intercultural uh, discussion, for example, in Germany or in Europe as itself. So it's very ex uh, essential that the officials here in the European Union also have official talks with those groups which are not controlled by a political force which has interests that violate our fundamental rights charter. Thank you.